Okay. I'm going to post a little video for people maybe thinking they want to get an old truck. And specifically, we have here my 1990 Toyota pickup. And I want to tell you my thought process, how I arrived with this. Now, obviously, I've mod made modifications and you know, a four-wheel disc brake upgrade and lo lots, of, lots of custom kind of things. But this truck started out basically a beaten down little truck. It has almost half a million miles on it. I found it on Craigslist. I have, I have some videos that talk about how I found it and things. I'll put the link in the description. But um, I got the truck for 800 bucks, and I probably put $10,000 into it. But for anyone who is kind of thinking in terms of, like, I wonder what it's like owning an old Toyota pickup. You know, you see these guys driving by. Usually they're they're either uh, Hispanic workers, and those guys know what's up. I'll tell you that when it comes to vehicles, it's hard to find a, a, a Mexican guy um, in anything but a Toyota pickup. And in other parts of the world, the Middle East, and you know uh, Central America, uh, you know Mexico, uh, these trucks are highly desirable. Um, when I when I drive down the coast, oftentimes I'll see, you know, one of these pickups uh, towing another pickup with a cut-up pickup in the bed, and you know, you know they're heading down to South America or Central America or Mexico, and um, they're just great trucks. So, but the point of this video is kind of to try to explain how I arrived at this particular truck why I wanted it in the first place and kind of what it's like having owned it over the last, you know, four or five years. I, I, I won't get into all the upgrades and things I've done to it. There's plenty of stuff on the channel about that. I, I just really kind of want to talk more in terms of like, well, what is it like when you own a truck like this? And, you know, why would somebody want to want to own it? So, for me, I originally ended up with this truck. It was originally just going to be my work truck, you know, for hauling wood around the property, you know, kind of getting firewood and so forth. And so I, I just needed something kind of, didn't need to be fancy or anything, and I got this beat up old truck, you know. Like I said, I have a video that talks all about that. But, you know, the, and I have background in, in cars and, and things, and the more I started working on this truck and I, and I was kind of forced into working on it because it, I couldn't get it to pass smog and I didn't realize that I had to you know get a smog certificate to register it I, I was just going to use it on my property and and not you know actually register for the road but I, I you know I started having problems with the motor and as you guys know from the channel uh, I've done a lot of a lot of upgrades and, and made it nice but that was not the original plan uh, all the all this fancy stuff came about because I fell in love with, with the truck and I ended up you know having to rebuild the motor and, and so forth and like I say you know anyone who's who's uh, anyone who's been on my channel before knows but if if this is your first time you can kind of see I've, I've had the motor out uh, rebuilt it a couple times and, and all kinds of you know fancy stuff so but when I originally got this truck, uh, I, I had to start working on it, you know, underneath and stuff. And I started to be more and more impressed by the, the engineering of this truck. And if you're kind of, you know, interested in, in an older pickup truck, you, maybe you've seen the video from, I think it's Top Gear, or, uh, where they, they take this little red truck and they, they drag it through all kinds of things, trying to destroy it. And you just can't kill these you know the way that I kind of originally found this truck was I I just I wanted to get something super dependable and so I, I sat back and I said to myself you know what who makes the best vehicles okay well that's Toyota I think anybody who knows anything about cars knows that so Toyota makes the best vehicles okay I wanted a truck that was very simple I, I didn't want a lot of modern kind of things I mean 
you know, if you're going to have one, if you're going to get one of these trucks, you better really appreciate, you know, roll-up windows. It's just nothing ever goes wrong, pretty much. Nothing ever goes wrong with roll-up windows, you know. Uh, there's no switches to break, nothing like that. It, and, you know, manual gearbox. Just everything is designed kind of with simplicity in mind. Um, you know, I mean, these controls go to go to go to um, cables, you know, and obviously I've upgraded mine, but just everything is is just very basic, down to business, simple. Uh, there's not there's only one computer in the entire truck, and it's very you know bulletproof, robust. So just everything works, and there's not a lot of technology, which which you know makes the truck very very dependable uh i the reason i fell in love with the truck was because just it's it's a it's a kind of a classic frame design much like you see on a on an old style you know uh, roadster um just leaf springs in back a differential drive shaft gearbox uh, some A-arms, torsion bars. At first, I, I kind of was a little iffy on the torsion bars, but the more I've used them, uh, the more I kind of appreciate kind of how how simple and, and, and everything they are. Uh, the engine, the 22RE, that's kind of the other way that I found this truck was I, I wanted to, once I decided Toyota was where it was at, I, I started researching, like, what is the best four-cylinder motor that Toyota has ever made and I kind of came to the conclusion that it was the 22 RE which we see here and the 3 RZ FE those are the two most bulletproof four cylinder motors now this truck also came in a V6 but I for me I've spent many many years wrenching on motors rebuilding them servicing them there's nothing as wonderful as having your four spark plugs right there you can literally pull them out in, in a minute and a half using a you know, a spark, a spark plug uh, socket and a, and a wrench. That alone makes me want to own this truck. Um, also, it has a timing chain, so you don't have to worry about timing belts. Uh, on this particular vehicle, I I did do a conversion over to electric fan. That's not necessary, but I got I took off the power steering, threw it away, and then just looped over, as you can. Can see down here i have videos on the channel about that just did, did a loop like on a circle track car and it's just it's just this car is just a joy to drive so when i was kind of thinking like what is it you know which year do i want and so forth i i, I kind of focused in on the 22 re that led me into the the uh, 1989 to 1994 I knew I didn't care about four-wheel drive because, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go off-roading or anything. I could always put a, a locker in the back if I really needed to get, you know, off-road or something. I didn't want the weight and the complexity of, of a four-wheel drive vehicle because I had owned those in the past. And this is just going to be mostly for cruising on the highway, you know, taking, uh, going to Home Depot, taking wood around. So... That narrowed the that, that narrowed the search down. You know, Toyota four cylinder, 22 RE, two wheel drive. You know, for me, manual gearbox is where it's at. And so I ended up finding this truck. You know, and I, I like the lines of the two, uh, the two door without the extended cab. I also like the extended cab, but th this truck happened to come up. I wanted a certain amount of kind of, I guess you'd say patina on it. So if you look at, at the bed, yeah, it's rusty, but I don't care. You know, I mean, I like it. I think that, that makes the truck, gives the truck some character, you know. Uh, this truck obviously spent a hard life on a farm somewhere because you can see it's bowed out. They must have loaded it with, with tons of, <laughs> you know, tons of stuff. But I think that gives it a lot of charm, you know. Sure, I had to fix a few things on it. Um, I mean... The wheel bearings and the seals needed replacing and stuff like that. But the more I worked on it, the more I began to really appreciate the engineering. I was like, wow, look at how Toyota did this. It's so strong and simple and down to business, you know. And it's just this, this the way they did this will never break, you know. And so I, and, and when I drove the truck, especially when I took the power sting off, I was like, my God, this thing handles really nice. 
and I can it's just it's just so comfortable other people have been in the vehicle and and they always comment uh, particularly you know with the bench seat uh, people always comment like oh my god this thing is so nice you know and so smooth so so those are all really a lot in my mind a lot of pluses you know pros to own this vehicle now if you're contemplating getting a Toyota pickup like this I should tell you about the cons <laughs> not really cons to me but they might be cons to some people for one if if you want a vehicle that is really smooth from an engine standpoint this ain't it man <laughs> and it never will be it four cylinders inherently have a little bit of an unbalanced nature to them and nothing you do is going to make this thing go down the road like a bentley uh or or even a v6 you know acura i drove my friend acura one time after i owned this truck and i was like my god this is the most smooth vehicle i've ever been in and then i realized oh okay wait i'm i'm just used to my truck so you know it's definitely while the truck is it is a smooth ride the motor it's you know you can spend your whole life obsessing over trying to get the 22re to idle the way you want eventually you just have to give up and it's like it's never going to idle smooth it's, there's always a little bit of noise there's always a little bit of you know shakiness like just you just have to come to terms with that and accept it and, and once you do that then you can kind of you know enjoy it but the motor i mean even in disrepair this thing will will run and run and run and run it just basically once you get it working it just requires oil changes you're not going to win any drag races like you know so you better be cool with like a prius absolutely smoking you off the line but i mean you know if you want a performance car then this ain't it and now i'm i'm getting ready to build a 3rz fe turbo so that might be a different story but the 22 re is just a, a good solid motor and it can go you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles with relatively little attention to or maintenance now if you're a single guy you know uh you, you're gonna you're gonna get some mixed when you tell women that you drive a, an old pickup truck you're gonna it's that's the great divide you know some women think that's amazing and awesome and they love it and other women are like yeah i only date guys who have you know, mercedes and bmws okay well i'm not that guy not not anymore i mean i've, I've owned four for four ferraris and i've owned lots of you know kind of ritzy cars but you know i'm kind of over that i love my pickup truck as much as i love my ferrari 458 italia that's how much i love this thing and and so if you're single and you're dating just you're gonna have to find a woman who loves like the bench seat you know kind of simplicity of the truck okay because otherwise <laughs> you know your wife's not going to be real happy with you because this is it's a little bit of a rough kind of thing but a little bit of a rough ride sometimes um but i i guess if if this kind of simplistic you know roll up windows everything you know it has an actual key instead of a fob there's you know you have to actually like when i let my girlfriend in you know i have to go around and unlock the door and let her in there's there's nothing electronic about this this vehicle and that's appeals to a certain kind of person like like me and maybe you know if you're watching this video like you and you're like hey i've i've had my fill of of all this complexity and electronic stuff that never works and then they you go to the dealer and they're like well it's going to be fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars to even figure out what's what the problem is you know this car here as i mentioned only has one computer and the thing that's really nice is it's an obd1 computer so you know when you see about hooking up scan tools and getting you know check engine light codes and stuff that's all obd2 stuff which came later in 1996 because this is a 90 pickup it's using the obd1 computer which is kind of the predecessor to the obd2 now that has pros and cons one of the the one of the pros is it's just very simple it has kind of the minimum electronic ignition stuff that you want and it doesn't have a lot of other stuff that you don't want um 
for any sort of it has a diagnostic box but it's it's relatively limited if you get into check engine light stuff you have to jumper that and then you have to like morris code the blinks of the check engine light so there's no hooking up to an obt2 scanner to figure out what is wrong with your car you better just understand how to figure out what's wrong with your car more or less also if you live in a state where you have to get smog done your smog checks are going to be kind of more extensive on an obd2 they just more or less plug it in the computer no check engine lights no you know im kind of uh you know codes uh, or uh signals and they're like okay you're you're cool you're good to go here's your smog certificate uh, but that's not how it works on this they have to kind of get old school and manually check different things manually check the EGR manually check the vacuum modulator manually you know sniff the tailpipe so your smog checks are going to be twice as expensive <laughs> and they're going to be five times as long so you know you should be aware of that uh, but you know otherwise i mean just everything if you particularly if you work on the vehicle yourself everything is very simple you break down on the side of the road and nine times out of ten you can can figure out you know what's wrong and get and get going again that's one of the things i really like about the truck is I, I feel like i could get in this truck and you know drive to the to new york <laughs> not that i would want to go to new york but i'm just saying i could drive to new york and i feel like if i broke down the side of the road you know you give me a 10 millimeter wrench and a 12 millimeter wrench and some duct tape maybe and i'll get back on the road you know so that is a nice feeling when you're driving along uh, you you feel kind of like you're bulletproof and like particularly if you work on the vehicle yourself uh, it's very simple and, you know if you're out in the woods driving on a trail and something goes wrong like hey i i can get back to civilization you know i can drive across the country and i'm not scared that that anything's gonna you know suddenly i'm gonna get a computer malfunction and the car is gonna turn itself off on the side of the road so that's a nice feeling like i say if you're the kind of person who just really appreciates kind of minimalism and and simplicity and you want a vehicle that is very robust doesn't cost a lot of money will go and go and go and go i mean i drove this thing several thousand miles and i had all my rings were fractured <laughs> you know that so that gives you kind of an idea of how this little motor will just get get you home uh, under the most you know extreme kind of the gravest extremes kind of uh it will it will do its thing and and, and get you back back uh, to safety so that's you know, in a world of cars that are overly complex, overly expensive, I mean, nowadays they think nothing of charging fifty, sixty thousand dollars for for a vehicle. It's it's to me, you know, it's just comical kind of that people would spend that kind of money when for you know what, thirty five hundred bucks, forty five hundred bucks, you can get yourself a truck that'll last another two hundred thousand miles with just a little bit of service, um, and. Uh, like I say, if, as long as you don't mind people kind of looking at you sideways, like, why are you driving this old pickup truck? Then, you know, maybe this is for you. And the other thing is that, you know, be prepared for people to ask, uh, particularly when you drive to Home Depot. People will, will ask, like, oh, do you want to sell your truck, you know? And, and no, 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 it's not, not, not for sale, you know, because these trucks are becoming increasingly hard to find. But... I would say that that really this uh, 89 to 1994 5 uh, Toyota pickup truck is is probably the one of the best trucks if not vehicles ever produced. I mean, like I say, you know, the 22 RE, a manual gearbox and I mean, what else do you need, you know? So that kind of gives you a little bit of a feeling i think of, of of what it's like if you if you're contemplating getting one of these you know as, as long as you don't mind fixing little things that have you know you that need attention um, mostly it's the wheel bearings and the brakes and stuff like that uh, if you are shopping one you, you definitely want to check and make sure you know everything works 
Uh, when I got my truck, there was lots of little miscellaneous things that did not work uh, that, that kind of needed attention. But once you not check all those things off the list, then then you know you're you're, you're pretty much good to go. The other thing is, I mean, I don't have air conditioning. Uh, it's so you know you kind of got to be a little bit more rough and tumble about driving down the highway. If you you know 100 degrees, you just got to throw the windows open and and you know kind of enjoy the the weather and. Um, it's just a whole different approach to to have to owning a vehicle. You know, you, I mean, for me, I like uh, I like I, I don't think there's a straight panel on my entire truck, and I like that. You know, because I don't have to worry where the hell I park. <laughs> like, I park anywhere I want, and people open their door into me. I really don't even care anymore. And that's a that's a big a big difference to when you own a, a $300,000 exotic car and, and you know, you're a nervous wreck where you park it. That stuff gets old fast, you know. Um, but like I say, this, this vehicle is just really a joy to own. I love that it's, it's so simple and easy to work on. And um, I think it's just, you know, particularly if you're a guy like me who just wears jeans and, and boots and a t-shirt, like this really fits the bill. Uh, and it's it's just, uh, I, I don't think you can find a better truck. Uh, the only thing that might even come close is kind of the, 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 the 2000, the early 2000s Tacomas. Uh, my buddy has one of those. It's a very nice truck for sure, but it, but this has the simplicity that I want in my life. And it has the reliability, and uh, you know, if that's what you're seeking, I, I think, and you know, I think you can't go wrong. So, uh, if you have any questions about, you know, what it's like over the last, you know, five years of, of ownership, or any specific questions, uh, more than happy to, 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 you know, talk in the comments and field any questions and stuff. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, like I say, if you have any comments or questions or anything, feel free to use the section below. Thanks for watching.